We're in the Tolman Loveland home. It's a beautiful brick home. It was the home of Judson Tolman family until they left and then the uh, Lovelands came in. Judson Tolman was the bishop of Chesterfield. He helped build the chapel, did the wonderful woodwork up there. He helped build the tithing house and they built this beautiful home. He was a rancher and a farmer and had property. He and his son-in-law built the brick store in 1903, which was a great service to the community. He and Nathan Barlow, who was son-in-law, owned property and, uh, and different uh, ways of making a living, cattle, sheep, and so forth. In the winter, or I should say the summer of 1907, he and his son-in-law purchased 3,000 head of sheep. That winter, the temperature dropped to almost 60 below zero, and it wiped them out financially. He had many of the saints in the valley charging on his books, on the records. Didn't have mon money, so they would charge. And uh, when that disaster hit of the cold winter, he had a choice. He could either try to collect the money from the saints who didn't have money, or he could close the books, forgive all the debts, and walk away. And his choice was to close the books and walk away. And that's what he did in the family. So he and the Nathan Barlow family moved from Chesterfield, moved to Preston, Idaho and uh, left the saints to kind of get by as best they could without paying off the bills they owed to him. That was the beginning of the migration out of Chesterfield. They had the flu epidemic of 1918 that hurt them a lot. They had the First World War that came in 1914. A lot of the young men went away and never returned. They had the Second World War. A lot of them left and never came back. And then finally the depression hit. And that really hit Chesterfield hard. They couldn't make a living. And with the weather being as it was, they fought the weather year after year. For 70 years, they fought Chesterfield weather. And they were dry farmers. Many summers, they would have no rain. And two years would pass with no rain. And finally, I went with it. when the Depression hit, that kind of put the, put the last nail in the coffin. And families began to leave. My family left in 1930. My wife's family left in 1925. And they continued to leave because they could not make a living in Chesterfield. By 19, well, the store closed in 1956. The church was moved down the valley in 1956. By 19... 57, 58, it was virtually a ghost town. There were a few still strugglers hanging on, but it was virtually a ghost town. And the, they couldn't sell the property, they couldn't sell the buildings, because who would want to move way out here in the middle of nowhere and try to make a living? And so they left, abandoned, they abandoned the homes, the stores, the bricks, the beautiful buildings, and walked away. And here Chesterfield stood as the ghost town continued to deteriorate over the decades until 1980, a hundred years after it was founded. The families got together and said, we cannot let this town die. We say Chesterfield never failed. There was a second life for Chesterfield and a reason for the restoration. And we're delighted to be a part of that and know it's important and vital that we know our past so that we can determine our future.